it cannot be that good. <laughs> All right, so e5, we know it's not good. And then knight g4, you're already winning by 1.3, according to the computer. They move to protect it, we get the knight anyways. Now, bishop f4 yeah. is not even that good of a move, but it's putting pressure. And a lot yeah. of people, including yourself, you start to get uncomfortable when the pressure starts to build. You did the best move next, which is knight b2, c6. You're developing by defending the knight. And then after bishop b5, all you have to do is keep it simple. I prefer to play something like bishop d7. You continue to develop, and you're defending. You're ready to castle queen side. The main concern... Yeah. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but if I move the bishop, I lose my e e5 knight because ah freaking a it, yeah I didn't see, I didn't oh, know the knights can move backwards. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna say I lose my pawn on c7, but you actually thought you had to take with any of these pieces and then this. <laughs> No man, they're protecting That's each other. That's the flood. They're just protecting each other. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I rather lose a pawn than a knight. So the line would have been like you were going to say, move my bishop to d seven, mm -hmm. and then and then you're... many people get uh, concerned about this move, but here you have so many ways to to deal with it. Um, actually, let me ask you, how would you continue from here? My first candidate move is just to move my pawn to g6 to fianchetto my bishop and get ready to castle. Yeah, correct. Well, yeah, you could do that definitely, but I just want you to know that even though they got the pawn back, they were not supposed to. If they get it, then there are complications for them. And there are a few few things to do. Number one, you could play something like knight before already. Oh. Going after that. And then, even if they try to protect it with knight three, then you have rook to c8. Bishop has to leave, and then this is yours. So you get the pawn back. You could also have done it the other way around. You could have gone rook c8 first, mm -hmm. and then leave the knight. But the coolest way to do this is pawn to e5. Notice how the bishop is trapped. Very interesting. Early in the game, but the oh. bishop is trapped. That's beautiful. And this That's is very beautiful. these are very natural moves. Once they realize, oh, I messed up, I lost the pawn, they're gonna go after the knight. You defended it yeah. like you did. And then this is a logical move, pinning it. Well, yeah. I just remember Bishop D seven, they could take now I remember the knight takes back. Yeah. And even if that was my pawn, calculation. Yeah. 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 Now even if they take the pawn, you know wait, wait, wait. Uh six months ago I went over it and I think I, I had to play knight before or rook c eight. Or e5, one of these moves has to come to mind. I and love e5. e5 is very good. And even if they go f4, trying to get out, because if you take, they take with the bishop. If you don't, they're going to take with the bishop, anyways. You still have, I mean, these threats, but you could even keep it simple. And then you just take, pawn takes, and then rook to c2. And man, this has to be completely winning yeah. for you. Completely. Yeah. Winning. 